When we start writing somewhat complex spreadsheets, we'll often find the need to use the if function. And often along with the if function come and and or functions. Let's take a look at all of them now. Okay, so consider this simple spreadsheet as usual. I'm showing only four people, but we could be dealing with a thousand. And what we have here is uh, we've got several people's incomes and the tax that they paid or the tax that was computed for them, whatever it is, right? And we want to add a remarks column which says if the tax is less than 1500, write a formula in D2 to enter review in this column, right? In other words, for every person for whom the tax is less than 1500, we want to review those cases, let's say, right? So we want to write a formula here that will put review if the tax is less than 1500, otherwise it will leave the cell blank. Okay, so that's that's really what we're looking at. So obviously here what we're really saying is whether or not something appears here or what appears in this particular cell is controlled by some condition. In other words, we are saying if the tax is less than 1500, put remark, uh, put review in this particular cell. Okay, and uh, of course, as always, we don't want to put the number 1500 in the formula, so we are isolating it. So we've put it off all by itself in the cell B8 because later on somebody may come and say, you know what, initially we thought 1500 is the cutoff for review, uh, but let's change that and make it 1200. Let's make it 1700, whatever. That number may change. And therefore, we don't want to have that, uh, have to make that change in many places. We want to make it in one place, so isolate. Okay. So the formula that we are going to write here is if C2, this is the tax column, is less than dollar $B, dollar $8, which is where the assumption 1500 is, comma, review within double quotes, which is what we want to fill in the cell. Otherwise, comma, double quote, double quote, which is blank. Leave the cell blank. Okay, so we write this formula and of course we write B8 as an absolute address because we don't want that to change when the formula is copied. C2 is relative. We do want it to change when the formula is copied and pasted. All that is good. Okay, so this is the structure of the if function and we'll take a closer look at it later. Note that the if function has three arguments. The first argument is the condition. The second argument is the result of the function if the condition evaluates to true if the condition is satisfied. And the third argument is the value that the function evaluates to if the condition is not satisfied or if the condition is false. So those are the three arguments for the if statement. Of course, we want review to be put in here, but we cannot just write review. We have to put it within double quotes. And of course, to say that it should be empty, we are putting double quote, double quote. Okay. So that's what it looks like if C2, uh, etc. And of course, uh, just like uh, us saying that we don't want actual numbers like 1500 to occur in our formula, the same thing holds when it comes to constants like review. That's a literal. And suppose you put review as it is here, and then somebody comes along and say, uh, you know what, I management doesn't want you to put uh, the text review Instead, management wants to put some other text, okay, uh, suspect, let's say, right? Then again, we have the same problem of having to make a change uh, in thousand formulas if, we, if the same thing occurs a thousand times. So that is as much an assumption as anything else, and we ought to isolate that also, right? So here I'm emphasizing this, that we should not think that the only assumptions we need to isolate are assumptions with regard to numbers. Anything literal that we put into a formula is potentially an assumption that might need to be isolated. So here's a revised version of that same spreadsheet. I've just moved it over to a different part of the spreadsheet in columns G to J. So now we have isolated the assumption. We've called it display text or text to display if you like. That's we just put in review there. And within the formula we now have if I2 less than $H $8 which is I2 being the tax, $H, $8 is the cutoff amount, comma, $H, $9, meaning if this condition is true, display the text which is in H9, otherwise display the empty text, keep the cell empty. 
not really empty but the text has the empty string okay and once we write the formula for this we copy it for all the remaining cells and we are done okay now it's very important to note if you look into the cells uh, j3 and j4 they look like they are empty but if you actually go and click in those cells you will see the formula it is the only reason that it's turning out empty is that the result of the formula eval evaluates to the empty string and therefore these two cells contain the empty string the cells are not empty actually meaning an empty cell is something that doesn't contain anything at all like for example this cell would be completely empty this cell is not empty it contains the empty string so it contains a string so the assumptions that have been isolated are both here as we discussed okay so let's take a look at the structure of the if function so we say if which is the name of the function and then the very first argument is the condition right condition it's a logical expression which could be true or false meaning if uh, you know dollar a dollar one or if a one less than something or if a two greater than or equal to something that's what is called as a logical condition sometimes people refer to these as predicates anything that has a value of either true or false is called a predicate so the first argument to the if function is a predicate the second argument and I've broken it into separate lines just for clarity is whatever the result of the function is supposed to be if the condition or the predicate that is here is true right so we may say if the condition is true then this is the formula that you need to put as a result and the third argument is if the condition is false then what is supposed to be the result of the expression result of the if function okay so those are the three things that we have to do now let we will of course re-emphasize this uh, by having lots of looking at lots of examples okay so I've just shown it on multiple lines for clarity let's take one more example let's say the condition is the for tax rate once again we are continuing the tax example for the first ten thousand dollars of somebody's income let's say the tax rate is 15 percent of their income and for any income over ten thousand that they have the tax rate is twenty percent okay so let's see example so consider the case of somebody who has an income of eight thousand because the tax rate for the first ten thousand dollars is fifteen percent so this eight thousand dollars will be taxed at fifteen percent and therefore their tax is going to be fifteen percent of eight thousand which is twelve hundred dollars on the other hand if somebody earns fifteen thousand dollars the first ten thousand would be taxed at the rate of fifteen percent so the tax on the first ten thousand dollars is going to be ten thousand times fifteen percent which is fifteen hundred dollars the remaining five thousand is going to be taxed at 20 percent and therefore the tax is going to be 5,000 times 20 percent which is 1,000 and therefore the total tax is 1,500 plus 1,000 which is 2,500 so this is the logic and our job now is to translate this logic into an Excel formula so first let's uh, isolate the assumptions so that's what we have done here so we have isolated the assumption and put them in uh, columns A and B so cutoff is 10,000 tax rate is 15,000 and cutoff beyond 10,000 that tax rate is 20,000 so we have done the usual isolation of assumptions so now we've got the isolated assumptions sitting here and we've got the actual people and their incomes here and we need to write a formula here for the tax so in cell C7 we want to write one formula and as I've already said if we are doing identical computations we should not be writing multiple formulas we write one formula and copy it so that's what we are trying to do here so let's see how the formula is going to look this is a somewhat complicated formula so we'll develop it step by step okay of course it's going to be an if uh, formula we're going to use the if function so clearly it, it, we're going to say if b7 less than dollar a dollar two so b7 being the income if it's less than dollar a dollar two in other words the income is less than ten thousand or less than or equal to ten thousand then the tax is clearly going to be b7 multiplied by dollar b dollar two right dollar b dollar two being uh, the tax rate so b7 being the income so that's the result 
So if the income is less than 10,000, we know what the result is. So we can supply the first two arguments for our if function. The condition and what is the result if the condition is true. Okay. On the other hand, it's not simple to determine what the result is going to be if the condition is false. So I've just replaced that with ellipsis for now. So let's see how to handle that part of it. Okay. So clearly we can see the answer is given right here. So if the condition is true, the tax is B7 times dollar B dollar 2. If the condition is false, that means the income is greater than 10,000. So then the tax is going to be 10,000 times 15%, which is dollar A dollar 2 times dollar B dollar 2. That's the tax on the first 10,000 plus the tax on the remaining. And what is the remaining amount? It is B7 minus dollar A dollar 2, right? That is the amount that is over and above 10,000 multiplied by dollar B dollar 3, which is the applicable tax rate for any amount over 10,000. Okay, so you can see here that the third part of the if, uh, if function is a somewhat complicated formula where we say if the income is uh, greater than 10,000, then we have the tax for the first 10,000 plus the tax for the remaining. So we have written the formula like this. So all the dollar amounts, we have formatted them using the accounting formatting. Let's take a look at how that works within Excel. So I go to Excel. So I've got this here. So in order to format something as accounting, what we are doing is you can select the cells that you want to format in a certain way, right? Of course, you can format them as regular dollar signs, which is you can do that. And that's how you format it. But of course, uh, that comes out with two decimal places. And we don't want, let's say, the decimal places. Then we can use this icon here to move the decimal places either to the left or to the right. I'm going to move it to the right, uh, the decimal point to get rid of all the decimal places. Okay, so that is how you can use the accounting formatting. Uh, you can also use uh, the formatting uh, features here, right? So here you've got this uh, small drop down, select this, and then you can select more formatting options. What is shown here are the most frequently used formatting options. You can go here and do some, uh, some more form, uh, fancy formatting if you like. And you can also go here to more number formats and do even more if you want. You can explore all of these by yourself.